Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to uh, module uh, 4. In this uh, module we have uh, presented um, uh, Hilbert space which is a mathematical space and we have said that all quantum mechanically acceptable wave function must live in the Hilbert space and any operator we select to perform anything in quantum mechanics that should not take the wave function out of Hilbert space, it should keep things in the Hilbert space. So, this criteria uh, we have presented and we have shown the meaning of adjoint of an operator and we have seen that sometimes for an operator A, in many occasions we have seen that A is not equal to its adjoint such as DDX, derivative operator is it, 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 it they are not equal but sometimes a can be equal to its own adjoint such as x operator such as i d d x operator for these two operators this is valid and when this is valid it is called it is called self adjoint and a self adjoint operator is called Hermitian operator and we will see that already we have noticed that this operator ddx operator has taken a function out of the Hilbert space and here we are seeing that their adjoint is not equal to its own operator. So, this kind of operator cannot be acceptable in the in the quantum mechanics in order to use an operator in quantum mechanics it has to be Hermitian operator which means that its adjoint would be always equal to its own operator. So, this is something which is a requirement for quantum mechanics all quantum mechanical operators are Hermitian operators all quantum mechanical operators are Hermitian operator which means that it is self adjoint it is equal to its own adjoint and what will prove here now then then um, if A is an Hermitian operator then A acting on psi giving me this is called eigenvalue equation then lambda is going to be always real. What it suggests that an important property of Hermitian operator is that the eigenvalue of a Hermitian operator is real this is another one property of the Hermitian operator. So, I have mentioned that in quantum mechanics any operator cannot be used this kind of operator cannot be used 
only self adjoint operators can be used which is Hermitian operator. The moment I use Hermitian operator in quantum mechanics it gives me a direct consequence that Eigen value of, of that operator is going to be always real. So, let us prove that Eigen value of Hermitian operator would be real minus infinity to plus infinity. I am going to find out this integration this is nothing but A acting on psi which is nothing but lambda minus infinity to plus infinity psi star psi which is lambda and I have to find out now minus infinity to plus infinity A dagger A dagger psi whole star psi dx this is nothing but now because A is Hermitian operator it is A dagger would be equal to A which means I have A acting on psi star psi dx. Now A acting on psi is lambda so I get lambda star minus infinity to plus infinity psi star psi dx which is now psi star here we are assuming that psi is normalized which means is living in Hilbert space. It is normalized and that is why we can write down this psi star. So, we have seen that in order to be an Hermitian operator itself it has to be self adjoint which means that this two integral would be equal this two integral and in order to be equal I need to have lambda to be lambda star and this is possible only when lambda is real. A physical quantity can only be equal to its complex conjugate when lambda is real. For complex value let us say I b is a complex value can never be equal to it is complex conjugate because complex conjugate is going to be minus i b. So, it, lambda cannot be a complex number lambda has to be a real number which proves the fact that Eigen value of Hermitian operator is going to be always real. So, in quantum mechanics all the acceptable operators which I will use which they are going to be Hermitian operator and whenever that Hermitian operator acceptable operator in quantum mechanics when, when we acting on the wave function I will get the real Eigen value that is the that is the bottom line of, of this um, analysis. Next we will move to unitary operator. How do we define unitary operator? An operator u is unitary if inverse of that operator is equal to its adjoint. So, when inverse is equal to adjoint when if 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 this is equal we call it Hermitian operator this is Hermitian operator. But when its inverse is equal to its adjoint then it is called unitary operator. An important property of unitary operator is that if A is Hermitian operator then e to the power i e i a is going to be is an unitary operator. This is the property if a is Hermitian operator then e to the power i a would be unitary operator. We can prove that 
e to the power i a now exponential and operator and then minus 1 first I have to find out the inverse of the operator. So, this is the operator we are talking about this is u. Now, we have to first check the inverse of that operator inverse of the operator is going to be e to the power minus i a which can be written as following Taylor series expansion i a plus minus i a whole square divided by 2 factorial plus many other terms this is Taylor series expansion we are using which is nothing but 1 plus i a dagger plus i a dagger whole square divided by 2 and because a is Hermitian operator because this is true for this is Hermitian operator a is Hermitian operator I can write down this nothing but 1 plus i a plus i a whole square 2 plus because Hermitian operator in order to be Hermitian operator this should be equal which means that this one is nothing but e to the power e to the power i a dagger. So, we have proved that unitary operator inverse is equal to its dagger that is why this is unitary operator. So, it is an, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's an interesting property if a is Hermitian operator. So, exponential of that operator exponential of an Hermitian operator exponential of an complex exponential not any exponential complex exponential of an Hermitian operator is a unitary operator. We will move forward there are many properties we of the operators and uh, uh, the common algebra of operators we are uh, going over. Commutators of two operators are defined by the sign a comma b within bracket b it is given by a b minus b a this difference is called the commutator and if a and b commute then a b equals 0 which means a b equals b a does not matter which way it is acting. So, I can have a b acting on psi equals b a acting on psi the order does not matter whether b will be acting first or a would be acting first that order does not matter if they commute, but if they are not commuting if they, this is not 0 then order will matter. So, a b psi will not be equal to b a psi who will talk to psi first that will matter if they are not commuting. We will go to this exponential function of an operator which we have already seen how to express exponential function of an operator if it is e to the power a then we can use Taylor series expansion. e to the power a equals this is this should be 1, but to preserve the notation of the operator we are giving the cap a cap a cap is nothing but 1 multiplying by 1. So, 1 plus a plus a square by 2 plus a q by 3 factorial and this is the way we have to expand and what does it mean by this uh, power 
a square a square is nothing but a multiplied by a so if psi if it is acting on psi so first a will act on psi then again a will act on the entire component so that's the way we move forward with this power law of the operator often in time dependent quantum mechanics exponential operator is used to move initial wave function in time and space for example e to the power this is something which will uh, notice very soon e to the power i h t by h cut represents time propagator and that is why it is called time evolution operator. Why it is called time evolution operator we will find out. But one thing is clear because H we know that it is Hamiltonian operator is also an Hermitian operator. So, if H is Hermitian operator in the in the in the previous slide we have seen that if h is hermitian operator this whole complex function is going to be an unitary operator so this time propagator is an unitary operator uh, 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 unitary operator in 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 quantum mechanics now why it is time evolution operator we'll prove this it is time evolution operator because if we know psi x 0 a particle represented by the wave function initial wave function then I will be able to find out psi x t at a time t what would be the wave function of that particle that can be found by employing this time evolution operator on it. So, from initial wave function I can get the final wave function with the help of this time evolution operator. Now we will prove uh, how this time evolution operator is giving us uh, the this equation. This is something which will prove right now. We will use Taylor series expansion and uh, we will check this first. So, the equation which I have given here is that psi x t is equal to e to the power minus i h t by h cut psi x 0. So, this is something which we have to prove using time dependent Schrodinger equation and if we can prove then it will show that this operator which is unitary operator can be used to move the wave function from 0 point 0 time to other time and we will be able to find out the, um, the wave function at, at time t. So, what we will do first on the left hand side psi x t we can expand in the Taylor series expansion as psi x 0 plus d d t of psi x t at t equals 0 plus 1 by 2 factorial d 2 psi d x d t 2 at t equals 0. So, near t equals 0 
the values the derivatives are known will say and I can write down t square plus like this way. So, this is your left hand side I have. On the other hand right hand side I have e to the power minus i h t by h cut psi x 0 which can be rewritten as e to the power h t by i h cut psi x 0 which can be written as 1 plus h t by i h cut plus 1 by 2 h t by i h cut whole square. So, this is the operator acting on psi x 0. Now, time dependent Schrodinger equation is giving me i h cut d dt psi x t. equals h psi x t. Now, these are this should be partial derivatives because x is depending on uh, depends on time uh, and space and this should be also partial derivative. So, what I get here is that there is an equivalent from, from TDSE, I can get an equivalent relationship i h cut dt is equivalent to h operator and this equivalent of, uh, relation we will insert here. So, if we do that then what I get is that is following. So, from this step I get e to the power minus i h t by h cut psi x 0 is going to be now psi x 0 plus psi x t d t at t equals 0 t plus 1 by 2 factorial psi x t d t at equals 0 t square like this. What we see this is right hand side, the left hand side and the right hand sides are equal and because it is equal. we can say that psi x t equals e to the power minus i h t by h cut psi x 0. So, this is obtained with the help of TDSE. So, one can say that this is a solution of TDSE. So, time evolution operator is a solution of the TDSE and we will very uh, extensively use this time evolution operator um, in, in propagating the wave function as if, if I know the uh, wave function at t equals 0 time I will be able to get to know the wave function at any time depending on this time evolution operator. So, with this idea so far we have uh, described uh, different properties of the wave function and the operator which can be used in uh, quantum mechanics. And we have reviewed general several general properties of the quantum mechanically acceptable acceptable wave function and operators which are two key constituents of quantum mechanics and we have defined necessary linear algebra linear algebra terminologies using simple analytical mathematics such as integration, differentiation, exponentiation all this we have used.
Taylor series expansion. So, we have used simple um, analytical mathematics such as uh, integration all these things or integration differentiation and we have defined the properties of the wave function and the um, operator. While this analytical approach helps develop the basic theoretical framework needed to understand the quantum mechanically acceptable wave function space and operator space in details. Uh, I have already pointed out earlier that our ultimate target in this um, module is to prepare the platform for numerical implementation of the wave function and the operator and that will give birth to this basis set approach to quantum mechanics. And we will look at how this can be done. So, so far whatever we have studied has prepared the linear algebra connection, the background or the realization of the connection between linear algebra and quantum mechanics. Now, we are going to represent the, um, uh, the key constituents of quantum mechanics which is wave function and the operator psi and A both needs to be represented in the matrix form with the help of all the properties of linear algebra and we will see how to do that. So, here first we will do one comparison between a vector and a wave function. What is the connection between them? In three dimensional space a vector is of often represented by its components with respect to the x, y, z axis. Uh, for simplicity here consider a vector uh, two dimensional space you consider and the consider this vector. This vector is represented by this A x is the component along the x axis. A y is the component along the y axis and these are the unit vectors along the respective axis. This vector in linear algebra this the same vector this is this is called um, this is called algebraic uh, definition and this is matrix representation same vector. So, in the matrix representation I can represent the vector in terms of its components. What is the components I have? A x component and A y components I have for this vector. So, this is the matrix we represent. So, the same vector can be represented in a different way in a matrix form. Now, but, but when we have represented this implicitly we are saying that with respect to i j basis. With respect to i j basis why we have to uh, say it explicitly um, um, i j basis because if I can change the basis in a following way I can change the axis given like this. I just rotate the axis. Vector does not change, vector remains to be same in the uh, in the space in the position space or in the problem domain, but I have just rotated the axis my representation and if I rotate that then what will happen my i would be different this is now i dash my j would be different in a different direction and their components will also be different. But the same wave the same vector would be represented by different basis uh, sorry different components with respect to different basis. Right now basis is i dash j dash basis is not the same for this two representation although the vector is the same the same vector I am representing with two different bases and if I change the base basis I will change the components as well and that is why matrix representation will change, but each representation is representing the same vector. Therefore, one can represent the same vector using different bases as long as basis and corresponding components are known. 
as a physical state in quantum mechanics is represented by a wave function which can be expanded with respect to certain orthonormal basis the above vectorial argument the argument which we have given here applies to quantum mechanical state of a system and this is called basis set expansion of the wave function. So, a wave function we have seen that in quantum mechanics a wave function can be represented by linear combination of certain function this is called basis function e to the power uh, sorry i equals 0 to infinity and I get c naught phi naught plus c 1 phi 1 plus like this just like the representation here with respect to phi basis. What is the difference between these two? Here we have two dimensional but here we have infinite dimensional because I have infinite number of basis, basis set. So, that is the only difference, it is a dimensionality difference, but it is the same idea. I am just with respect to basis, I am representing the wave function, and if I do that, then one can say that this psi x can have a matrix representation following matrix representation C0, C1, C2 matrix representation and this is called the column matrix which is called vector in uh, linear algebra. We will uh, understand more about it, but the basic connection should be clarified here a vector and the wave function both would be equivalent in linear algebra in the context of basis set expansion. Here also we have a basis of i and j and I have expanded this vector and I have got this column matrix. Here I have used different basis i j i i i dash j dash and I am getting a different um, um, representation of the same vector. Similarly, here I have component c i and this is the basis and that is why all the components can be collected in a column and in this column matrix we can uh, we can we can represent the uh, wave function. This is the bracket notation we are using we will be using, but one thing uh, we have to uh, remember here the reason why we can use this basis set expansion is quite clear because in Hilbert space we said that if in, in a Hilbert space if phi are living in Hilbert space then their linear combination will also stay in Hilbert space and that is exactly that is why we can write it. So, this representation basis set representation is directly coming from the property of the Hilbert space as long as phi the basis are represent uh, are, are living in the Hilbert space we can we can use this kind of linear combination because linear combination of them would also live in the same Hilbert space. But one thing is clear from this discussion is that the formal mathematical framework of quantum mechanics in the basis set approach represents an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. I told you that this uh, summation is infinite. So, dimensionality is going to be infinite dimension. However, no numerical calculation of quantum mechanics can deal with infinite dimensional space. It can only deal with finite dimension of the basis. Therefore, the sum in equation in this equation must we have to truncate it to some finite number let us say n number of basis we consider instead of infinite we consider n number and we have to truncate it for the numerical implementation and this requirement can be fulfilled by making use of reduced Hilbert space. In, in that case one would assume that all the general properties of wave functions and the operators which we have discussed so far 
must be valid in the reduced Hilbert space then only we will be able to use linear algebra. So, even if I truncate it to the uh, to some finite value n number of basis if I use then we have to uh, uh, assume that even after truncation the reduced Hilbert space I prepared this reduced Hilbert space in this reduced Hilbert space all the properties which we have seen previously are valid and there are basically rigorous mathematical support for that it is it, it, it remains valid. So, it is not an issue for the numerical solution to, to get the numerical solution. So, finally, the wave function can be represented in this and generally we do not uh, mention very uh, frequently, but we should remember that when I, when you say that a function is represented by this column matrix with its components, this can be represented with respect to certain basis because if the basis is changing this coefficient will also change as we have seen here two vectors if the basis is changing coefficient will change similarly if the basis are changing coefficient will change but in the end the wave function will not change it is just different representation. So, when you say that this is when you say that this is the representation of the wave function we implicitly say that it is with respect to certain basis phi i. We will stop here and uh, we will continue this module in the next session.